What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony and today we are in the new 2020 Mazda CX-5 courtesy of Jack GM Volvo Mazda in York, PA. And so wanted to check this one out today actually for several reasons. First one being this one has scored a well above average reliability rating by Consumer Reports which by the way is the very highest reliability rating given by Consumer Reports, so you know it's solid to start. And not only that is there is several changes actually for the 2020 CX-5, so what do you say? Let's go ahead and jump right into it, and as always, let's start with pricing. And so of course, as expected, there are several different trim levels for the 2020 Mazda CX-5, first one being the Sport, starting at $25,090. Then you have the Touring for $26,730, Grand Touring for $30,210. Grand Touring Reserve, which actually is the one we are in today. This one's starting at $35,035. And lastly, the Signature starting at $37,055. And so for the Grand Touring Reserve and Signature trims, they actually come standard with all-wheel drive. However, for the first three, if you wanted to add all-wheel drive to any of those configurations, simply add $1,400 to any of those prices. And so powering this beast, there are actually two different engine setups available for this one first one belonging to the first three trim levels being the sport touring and grand touring that engine setup is a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder putting out 187 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 186 pound-feet of torque available at 4,000 rpm power of course sent to front wheels or all wheels through a six-speed automatic giving you mpg numbers at 25 city 31 highway for the front wheel drive 24 city 30 on the highway for the all-wheel drive but then there is the more powerful two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder belonging to trims including the grand touring reserve that we have today and the signature this one puts out 227 horsepower at 5,000 rpm if you put 87 octane in it. However, if you were to put 93 octane in this beast, that does bump the power numbers up actually quite substantially up to 250 horsepower in case you were curious there. Then to go along with it, 310 pound feet of torque available at 2000 RPM. If you go with 87 octane, 93 octane will bump you up to 320 pound feet of torque, which by the way, is a 10 pound feet of torque jump from the 2019 CX-5 for this engine setup at least. So there's one of the new changes for the 2020 CX-5, but power of course sent to all wheels through a six speed automatic, zero to 60 times, 6.4 seconds, which we will be testing out in a little bit here. MPG numbers come in at 22 in the city, 27 on the highway. But so now before we do any kind of accelerations, I did want to mention there is a sport driving mode found just to the left of the shifter. There's a little button for that. And so when I just put it in that sport driving mode, it did immediately downshift for me. So it is going to hold the RPMs at a much higher level. And it's also going to adjust throttle sensitivity as well. But so now having got all of those specs out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's do our first test and let's test out the acceleration here on the CX-5 and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. There we go. All right, definitely a very nice acceleration. I will say, I felt like it was shifting a bit early. Like, if I were to manually shift through the gears myself, which you can do, just slide the shifter all the way to the left, um, I kind of feel like I would have got a little bit of acceleration there. I feel like the Mazda CX-5 was shifting a bit early, but still, plenty of an acceleration, of course. Not gonna have any issues merging onto the highway or anything like that, but still, I feel like the CX-5 was holding back on me a little bit. That's all I'm saying, but definitely a very nice acceleration in this one. But to go along with that, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back, 11.9 inch solid rear discs. As far as the braking feel goes, it's been absolutely perfect for me so far today. Certainly no issues with braking feel or squishy brake or anything like that. Touching on suspension and handling a little bit, up front you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension with the stabilizer bar in the back, an independent multi-link rear suspension again with the stabilizer bar. However, yet another new feature for the 2020 CX-5, there is a new setting called off-road traction assist and this is essentially going to replace the traction control button but Mazda states what this off-road traction assist is actually going to do is when the wheels start to lose traction the system will stop reducing engine torque and increase brake force on the wheels without traction giving you of course more traction and less slippage so that's kind of nice 
As far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine for me today, so no issues there, but perhaps the best part about the CX-5, and I feel like I say this every time I review really any Mazda, this steering feel is quite weighty, and that is a good thing, so definitely gives you the best driver feedback. So I've test driven plenty of SUVs at this point, and the CX-5 is without a doubt the very nicest steering feel. Comparatively speaking to all the other SUVs in this class, for instance, I just got done reviewing the Hyundai Tucson, um, and, it, and it did have a nice steering feel, I gotta be honest, but definitely not as weighty as the CX-5. So I do prefer, as far as steering feels goes, the CX-5 is definitely at the top. So essentially what I'm saying is well done Mazda. Very good job there. And to go along with that, let me mention yet another new feature for the 2020 CX-5. As far as cabin noise goes, it is quite nice. Certainly no issues there, but the best part about that cabin noise is there is a new engine harmonics enhancer, which adds a more refined and powerful sound into the cabin so although I am cruising at a probably 25 miles per hour on these back roads right now when you do hit the gas you guys probably heard it during the acceleration it definitely was a very nice sound being pumped into the cabin so I definitely like that and yet that is another new feature for the 2020 CX-5 but so anyways touching on visibility I can see perfectly fine out the back as far as those headrests go they are kind of a kind of on the larger side it would have been nice if they could tuck down into the rear seats there to kind of add a little more visibility at least if that second row was not in use that's always a good thing but nonetheless I can still see perfectly fine out the back. I did want to also mention on top of that though, since we do kind of have rain in the forecast today, rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard across the board and that is for every single trim level. So that's definitely a plus. To go along with that, there is a windshield wiper de-icer that will come standard on the Grand Touring Reserve and the Signature trim. So when it gets super cold and icy and snowy in Pennsylvania, like it quite often does here, that is definitely going to be a plus as well. And yet another plus when it comes to visibility, I am currently looking at a head up display right now a very crystal clear head-up display by the way as well being projected onto my windshield giving me of course the speed limit of any given road that I am on along with the current speed I am currently traveling and I also came up at a stop sign back there and it projected a little stop sign onto my windshield as well so I think that's pretty cool and of course that better helps you keep your eyes on the road as well so another little safety feature there and certainly assisting with visibility overall so I do love that but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this jet black 2020 mazda cx-5 all right you guys so here she is the 2020 mazda cx-5 finished in a jet black exterior let's go ahead and start up front and so to the sides led headlights will come standard for every single trim level across the board and of course they will come with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out they're going to turn on automatically for you there also, LED daytime running lights, of course, coming standard as well. And I did want to mention, if you go with the Grand Touring trim level and up, you will get an adaptive front lighting system, meaning when you go in around a bend at night, the headlights will swivel based on your steering angle, better help illuminating what is around that bend, so you're less likely to hit a deer or whatever objects, of course, are in the road. Also, with that Grand Touring trim level and up, though, you will find LED fog lights just below and LED daytime running lights to go along with that as well. And so, but then making your way to the side of this one black window surrounds with chrome belt line molding will come standard across the board as well as rear privacy glass if you go with the touring trim level and up so did want to mention that body colored power adjustable side mirrors will come standard on all trim levels and they will actually come with led integrated turn signals as well then taking a look down at the wheel setup, 17 by 7 inch aluminum alloy wheels will come with the sport and touring trim levels. Then if you jump up to the grand touring trim level and up, you will get 19 by 7 inch aluminum alloy wheels if you went that route. So then make your way to the back. You guys could probably see there is a shark fin antenna up top there just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper, of course. And if you wanted LED taillights, go with the grand touring trim level and up. Of course, that is what you're looking at right now. They definitely look good back there. And just below all of it, dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips coming standard across the board. So I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Yeah. <laughs> 
And so, but now since we are around back of the CX-5, as far as opening that rear lift gate, there is a button on the key fob. So feel free to just press that. There's also a button on the actual lift gate. So there's a couple ways you can go about opening it up, but it is actually a power lift gate if you were to go with the Korean Touring trim level and up if you wanted to go that route. But once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at 30.9 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, those rear seats do fold down, bumping the cubic feetness up to 59.6 cubic feet. And although the driving dynamics are absolutely amazing in the CX-5, this is probably one area of the CX-5 that could use a little bit of room for improvement is the, the cargo space because that 59.6 cubic feet, that is less than its competitors like the Hyundai Tucson. Honda CRV actually comes in at 75.8 cubic feet, which is a ton. Ton. Toyota RAV4 69.8 so a lot of the competitors do have a substantial bit more cargo space than the CX-5 but again if you're looking for more of those driving dynamics it really can't be beat the CX-5 at least so I suppose that's kind of the trade-off but nonetheless underneath that cargo floor you can find a spare tire under there as well but then making your way to the rear legroom this is where the CX-5 gets actually pretty good 39.6 inches of rear legroom space for reference. I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. So actually plenty of space for me. So that's definitely nice. Rear ventilation comes standard on the touring trim level and up. You will find a rear center armrest with cup holders again on the touring trim level and up. You can actually get heated rear seats if you go with the grand touring reserve that we have today or signature trim level. So it's always nice spoiling the rear passengers with some heated rear seats. That's always a plus as well. Making our way to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seats will come with the sport trim level you will find a power driver seat with power lumbar for the touring trim level and up and by the way if you go with the touring and up you will also get heated front seats and then will come with a leatherette finish with suede inserts i've always liked that look actually so that's a nice little seating setup there grand touring trim level and up is going to give you memory settings for up to two different drivers and that comes with a power adjustable passenger seat as well and leather finishes and that is of course what you're looking at right now and you will find ventilated front seats with the Grand Touring Reserve and Signature and Napa leather seating if you were to go specifically with the Signature trim level. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel here. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped actually as well for every single trim level. That is definitely nice there. It will come heated if you were to go with the Grand Touring Reserve trim level or the Signature trim level. And if you're curious, that heated steering wheel button is located just to the right of the push button start there. So that's where you're going to find that speaking of when it comes to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here all the buttons are actually located on one side of the key including that mazda logo lock unlock and the button to pop the rear hatch but it is actually though a push button start for every single trim level so all i'm going to do here is put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there and so once started up tachometer is all the way on your left you have your fuel gauge all the way to the right and then you have your speedometer which is front and center of course and within that speedometer there's actually a small little digital display which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the left side there and that's going to give you things like trip a trip b there's some safety information up there when you need your next oil change that's always nice how many miles you have left until you hit empty you can actually choose to just leave it on the full speedometer mode where you actually have the needle up there front and center for taking up the full space there but definitely plenty of things you could check out up there so I did like that though. Taking a look at overall interior quality, power moonroof is going to come with a grand touring trim level and up. That's what you're looking at right now. Dual zone climate control up front there comes with the touring trim level and up. All trims will get an overhead sunglass holder found up top there. Home link controls for up to three different garage doors found on the rear view mirror will come with the grand touring trim level and up. Frameless rear view mirror is going to come with the signature trim level only, so that is not what you were looking at right now, of course. You will actually get a black cloth headliner with that signature trim as well. And there is going to be some added wood trim again if you went with the signature. Although, although we don't have the wood, I do like the design that they did just above the passenger side glove box and on the doors there. It's not wood trim, but it looks pretty good. I kind of like it. But so anyways just in front of the shifter you do have a 12 volt power outlet nice little storage area with a rubberized bottom so things don't slide around as much there's an electromechanical parking brake just behind the shifter along with 
dual cup holders as well, of course. And within that center armrest, that's really where you can find all your hookups. For instance, there's two USB charging ports. There is yet another 12 volt power outlet. And of course you have some cubby space and a little felt tray thing just on top of it all too. So that's where you're gonna find all your hookups essentially. But overall, I'm definitely not minding the interior. I wouldn't have minded seeing the wood trim on the signature. I think that would definitely look pretty good, but this actually looks pretty good as it is. So no complaints from me. Let's go ahead now and take a look at the tech display front and center here you will find a seven inch color touchscreen display if you were to go with the sport touring or grand touring trim levels however if you go with the reserve or signature you will find an eight inch color touchscreen display but either way you will still get bluetooth and audio streaming regardless of which setup that you go with along with android auto and apple carplay if you go with the touring trim level and up. That's not gonna come on the sport, unfortunately. So go with the touring and up, and therefore you have free navigation through your smartphone. You can like and dislike your Pandora songs up there, and there's a couple other apps as well. Factory navigation system is gonna come standard with the signature, although you don't really need it with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay there. You can also, of course, check out your radio settings up there. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems on the CX-5, you will actually get four speakers with the sport trim level, which really isn't a whole lot. Six speakers with the touring and all other trim levels, grand touring and up essentially is gonna give you a 10 speaker Bose sound system. So therefore that is the one we have today. So what do you guys say? Let me go ahead and turn on the radio here. Let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> actually really nice and I've had Bose sound systems in my cars before they've never failed me they're always really good and this one is no exception so definitely a very nice sound system on the CX-5 at least with the Bose setup I can vouch for that but also before we continue here I wanted to mention there is another way you can go about accessing that display screen up there it is a touch screen of course but there is a circular dial and buttons just behind the shifter so that's another route you can use and that's probably the better option if you're actually driving because it is a little bit of a reach there if you were to be driving and trying to access that so that's why that is essentially there but nonetheless last thing I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do put the CX-5 in reverse you will find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you for all trim levels and if you want with the signature trim you will also get a 360 degree monitor as well so that's how you're going to go ahead and get that and as always that is going to lead us into safety that's the first thing i have to mention on the cx5 it is a iihs top safety pick plus which is the very highest designation that iihs gives out so if you got kids this is a safe bet, but continuing on, front side and side curtain airbags will come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Rear child door locks, also standard back there, tire pressure monitoring system, but some of the more exciting advanced safety features coming standard across the board here are a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, hill start assist, advanced smart city brake support with pedestrian detection, also adaptive cruise control with stop and go, forward collision warning, and lane departure warning with lane keep assist and of course if you go with the grand touring trim level and up you're also going to get an auto dimming rear view mirror but that's a ton of standard safety features across the board so once again well done mazda there but that about rounds out this review of the cx5 do appreciate you guys watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there be a like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in the new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay go